Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to Church Online. Well, Terry, it is almost Christmas time. Unbelievable. Just a few days away, December 25th, and all the world will shut down, not for the coronavirus, but for something far greater than that, and that's to celebrate the birth of, of Jesus Christ. And so we're excited about that, and of course, we wish that we were inside your living room with you this morning, but we just want to really, both of us, just to say Merry Christmas to you. We certainly love and appreciate each and every one of you. Well, we have a, an exciting day and an exciting event that's coming up this Thursday, and would you tell us about, um, about that? Yes, normally we have our midweek online service on Wednesday evening, our Bible study at 7 p.m., and we have Zoom prayer meetings for the men and the women. We will not have any of those. We will have no services, no Zoom meetings on Wednesday this week. Instead, we will be having our Christmas Eve service on Thursday evening at 7 p.m. That will be online, and that will be a communion service. And also, we will have available for you um, our Christmas Eve service through Zoom. So you can either go online and participate in Christmas Eve or you can do it through Zoom. And we will be taking communion together. And so you will want to have the elements in your home, either some kind of juice and crackers or bread, have those ready so that we can take communion together. And we are just if we can't be together in person, this is the next best thing. And it's, it's just great that we have this means that we can use to yeah, and it, celebrate Christmas. Yeah, Christmas yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? It'll be super exciting. If you can, if you have the means to be able to do this, the capability, it would sure be great to see you on Christmas Eve by way of Zoom. So, uh, so again, as Terry said, there's two different ways that you can uh, connect with us on Christmas Eve for communion, and that's um, by way of online, like we are this morning, and also by way of Zoom. And we'll be getting that information to you, the, uh, the login information, the password, we'll be getting that to you on Tuesday by way of an email. But that'll certainly be a great time. Yes, it will. So there are no services on Wednesday evening. They will, the Zoom, and online service will be at 7 p.m. on Thursday evening, Christmas Eve. We hope to see you there, mm -hmm. and we wish you the merriest of Christmas. For those who we may not see on Thursday evening, we just pray that you have a wonderful Christmas. We pray for you regularly, yeah. and we miss you. So we really hope to see some of you on Thursday evening. That'll be great. That'll be great. Well, now... Let's just uh, move into our time of worship before the message, and I'll be speaking on the light of Christmas. So let's worship the Lord with all of our hearts for all that he's done for us. Are the word at the beginning Bond with God the Lord most high the hidden glory in creation now revealing you are Christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my what a beautiful name it is And nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus He didn't want heaven without us So Jesus, you brought heaven down my sin was great your love was greater and what can separate us now 
What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. And nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the veil torn before you. He silenced the boast of sin and grave. Heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name, name above all names. What a powerful name. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. And you have no rival, you have no now and forever, God, you reign. Cause yours is the kingdom, and yours is the glory, and yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can pass against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name. Well, thank you, worship team, once again, for helping us to worship the Lord and to lift up his name. And this being Christmas Sunday, it has just a, a special, it, it just has a specialness to it in which we can just open our hearts and worship the Lord. Well, this morning, I wanted to share with you for a few moments uh, a, a, a message that really hits home, especially at this time of the year, and especially the climate in which we find ourselves in today. And the title of my message this morning is The Light of Christmas. The Light of Christmas. Now, one of my favorite, favorite parts of Christmas are, and is the lights. I love the lights. It seems that November, the stores start to put up the Christmas trees and they start to put their lights up and then followed by the city. Um, the city starts putting lights up and Christmas decor and then it hits the neighborhood and uh, people start putting their lights up. We put our lights up and, um, and it just seems to light Christmas up. And I just love it. And I think uh, you probably have a street close to you or a uh, neighborhood, um, a, uh, a certain part of the city where people just go all out and they put lights in their places galore. And it just lights up the whole area. That's one of the things that I love about Christmas is are the lights of Christmas. In fact, Terry and I many times will go and get a coffee and just kind of ride around to 
the street or that place or that neighborhood and just enjoy the lights. And uh, in, in the lights of Christmas, they, uh, as I mentioned before, they just seem to light up everything. And it's inter- always been interesting to me that December 21st marks winter solstice. And as you know, in fact, I believe I mentioned this last week, that winter solstice, which is December 21st, it's tomorrow, is the, uh, marks the longest night of the year and the shortest day of the year. And it's always intrigued me and always been so interesting to me that in the, the darkest part of the year, the, the date, December 25th, in which we celebrate the birth of Christ, isn't it interesting, the darkest part of the year, the light of Christmas and the message of Christmas just pierces the darkness. Well, lights have always been an important part in Scripture. We see it from the very beginning of Genesis all the way through the Scripture where light has played an important part. And let's think back a little bit and look at the shepherds and uh, the experience <clears throat> that they had. The, uh, the angels put on a dazzling light show for the shepherds who were out in the field watching the sheep by night. And the scripture says the angel of the Lord appears to them and they saw really not just Gabriel who had a message for them, but the angelic host joined them and they glorified God. And I can only imagine, uh, one of the things that I enjoy at Disneyland is fantastic. It's a, that is a dazzling light show. But I want you to know this morning that Fantasmic doesn't hold anything to, uh, to what the, what the uh, angels uh, put on on that day. And I want to, just want to read the scripture here and, uh, and let's look at how the light impacted them. And it says in Luke chapter 2, verse number it says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. So right there we can see there is a, a lot of light that's taking place in the midst of, uh, of the night uh, while the shepherds were watching the sheep. It says, and the angel said to them, hey, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will be a cause for great joy for all people. And then the angel said this here, beautiful uh, statement. He said, today in the town of David, a savior. If you have your Bible open to, Ju- to uh, Luke chapter two, verse number uh, 11, you might want to even circle that there. I've got that in my Bible. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. And then they said, this will be a sign to you You'll find the baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And then suddenly, the scripture says, verse 13, suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, the angel Gabriel, and they were praising God and they were saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. Can you imagine what that must have been like? The glory of the Lord shone round about them. And here are these angels. What a show that was. And it, would, it accompanied a tremendous message. They were saying to these shepherds, the first people to receive the invitation to visit Jesus Christ, the Christ child. And, uh, and here they are. They receive this invitation. They take off. They find him. And they worship him. Well, they weren't the only ones that had a light show or had light involved in the uh, Christmas narrative, but there were the wise men. The wise men saw another bright light in the sky, and they followed it to where Jesus Christ was born, to where the Savior was born. And I want to read that, uh, this passage as well. It says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, during the time of King Herod, the Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, and they asked, Where is he who was born King of the Jews. We saw his star, and I'll tell you right now, it wasn't a dim star. It was a bright star. It was 
filled with light. It says, we saw a star and when, when it rose, and we have come to do what? We have come to worship him. And then uh, they had some dialogue with uh, King Herod. And then uh, after their dialogue with King Herod, he, uh, he said, hey, go search for the Messiah. Go search for Jesus. And when you found him, come and tell me about it. And then after their conversation with King Herod, the scripture says that the, uh, they saw that light again, the star that led them and took them to where Jesus Christ was. It says, and that star they had seen when it arose, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, when they saw the star, the Bible says they were overjoyed. They were overjoyed. They were excited. They were happy. They were overjoyed. And they came and they found Jesus there. And then the Bible says they knelt down and they worshiped him and they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And so light has always been a major theme in the scriptures. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse number 5, it says this here, God is light, God is light, and in him there's no darkness whatsoever. There's no darkness at all. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 3 says, he said, God said this, let there be light, and there was light. In uh, John chapter 8, verse number 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. John chapter 12, verse number 46, Jesus said, I have come as a light to shine in a dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer wander around in darkness. And I think it's important for us this morning to recognize and to know that he's not talking about a physical darkness here in this passage of scripture. He's talking about a personal darkness, a spiritual darkness in, uh, in, in a person's life. And so we, uh, we look at personal darkness or a lostness and, you know, it doesn't take us long to recognize and realize in life that everybody, I don't care who you are, how long you've served the Lord, or if you just became a follower of Jesus Christ yesterday, everybody has dark days. Everybody does. It doesn't matter who you are. Everybody has dark days when you just have that feeling of, Man, I just don't want to roll out of bed. I don't want to face the day. The, uh, the, the, the problems just seem so insurmountable that are before me. You don't want to see anybody. You don't want to do anything. You have that dark day. And so I want us to look this morning on the light of Christmas, on the light, the spectacular light of Christmas for the dark day that you might be experiencing today. And uh, dark days, there's, I call them the four, the, uh, the four uh, death Ds, the, uh, the, uh, the, the dark days of disappointment, the, uh, the dark days of distress, the dark days of, of, of doubt. And then there's the dark days of depression, the D killers, disappointment, distress, doubt. And depression and so we experience dark days periodically in our lives we experience dark days of doubt and the Bible says in Job chapter 30 verse number 26 says I hope for happiness and light but trouble and darkness come instead is what Job said and so there's been a lot of disappointment that has gone around this has been a different year that's for sure 2020 has been a year like None other. I've never experienced a year like this ever. I don't think our country has in a long, long while. It's been a, uh, a, a, uh, a year that's been filled with, with disappointment. We uh, have just gone through the elections. We, uh, we still don't have that absolutely 100% ratified uh, due to some of the fraud, cheating, those kinds of things that, are, that have gone on. They're still doing some investigation, but... Um, but we look at the elections. It's disappointing for our country to be in such a place. There's a, uh, a Senate runoff in the state of Georgia. And uh, there's people that are 
disappointed there, people who are in prayer. We uh, look at the whole coronavirus that has hit L.A. County like none other county in California. And uh, to the place where, I believe it was I read in the L.A. Times that said they're at 0% ICU bed capacity. And, uh, and so disappointing times, disappointing times that can be um, discouraging. I imagine this morning, if we were to read once again through the, uh, the birth narrative of Jesus Christ and, and that which preceded um, his birth, I imagine Mary experienced disappointment the very first Christmas. Because think about it. Mary's been told, she's been told that you're going to bear the Messiah, the Son of God. He's uh, God come in the flesh. And uh, she recognizes this and realizes this and is thinking, wow, and humbled in this situation. And so she she's goes on this long journey to get to a place where she finds that there's no room at the inn for her. And so she has this this promised child, the Messiah. She has this child, not at, at a hotel, not at a Holiday Inn or a Hilton or not even a Motel 6. The uh, innkeeper sends her to a stable. And so I'm sure that she had some disappointment for sure in that. There's also the dark days of distress where you just feel overwhelmed with what is taking place and going on around you. And I'm sure that Mary probably felt <clears throat> distressed as well at the very first Christmas. Because in the first place, she's, she's nine months with child, and she's got to ride on this donkey. Some say it was a, she rode in a cart, actually. Some say it was, she did actually do the donkey ride and all. But whatever the case, whatever the case, nine months pregnant, and she's making this trip to Bethlehem. And I think for sure that had to be awfully stressful for Mary. She's having the first baby she's ever had. She's all alone in this stable. And I think, I think that would be really stressful. Uh, David in the scripture says in Psalm 22, verse number one, he uh, experienced distress. He said, I cried desperately for help, but still no one comes. And so my guess this morning for, uh, for us, for each of us, for uh, those that are listening in this morning, I'm sure that you've experienced some dark days of distress yourself personally, dark days of stress where, you, where you're stressed financially. It might be you're stressed physically. You might be stressed relationship-wise, uh, maybe in the marriage, maybe with the sons and daughters, maybe with family members. Um, maybe there's some relationship problems at work, um, but difficult times. And then there's the dark days of doubt. And John chapter 12, verse 35 says, The one who walks in the dark does not know where he is going. And I'll tell you what, we have um, a lot of people in our community, in our society, in our culture, who... Uh, have filled with doubt. They have no purpose in life. They just don't feel like they're worth anything. They don't know about tomorrow. They don't have a goal in mind. They don't have direction in their life. And they just live from day to day, from one high to the next, from, uh, from one excitement, one exciting thing to the next, and, uh, but with no purpose, no relationship with the Lord. And they're walking in that way without Christ, and uh, when you're walking without Christ, it's like walking in a fog. We uh, served as associate pastors at a church in the San Joaquin Valley in uh, Northern California. It was in a city called Turlock. The church was Bethel Temple. I think it's Harvest Assembly of God now. But, uh, but we lived right close to the church. And uh, in fact, we lived across the street from the church. And one of the things that they have in the valley is they have this thing they call Tule fog. And if you know anything about fog or have been in Thule fog, you know what it's like. You can't even see five feet in front of you. That's how dense it is. And uh, in fact, I remember Terry and I one, uh, one Sunday night and uh, the fog had set in. We actually, we lived in a 
church parsonage across the street from the church. And I remember we couldn't see across the street because the fog was so dense. And so when we got prepared uh, with the girls to cross the street, we, uh, we just had to stand there for a minute and listen for cars. And uh, when, we did, when it was quiet, then we went across the street. But it was dark. You couldn't see where you were going. And uh, I've thought about that a lot of times where there's that doubt in people. They have no purpose. They have no reason for uh, tomorrow. And they're walking in, in just a, a, uh, a darkness, just like a fog. No, no uh, direction. Can't see where they're going. And then there's not only the dark days of disappointment and dark days of distress, the dark days of doubt, but then it brings us to the fourth deadly D, and that's the dark days of depression. And that's when you just feel like, hey, I, I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to see anybody. I don't want to do anything at all. And depression sits in, and you feel like, hey, I, there's no hope for me. There's no hope out of the situation. In Lamentations chapter 3, verse 19 and 20, it says, the thought, he said this here, the thought of my, my pain is bitter poison. I think of it constantly, and my spirit is depressed. Um, maybe you might feel like David when he said in, in Psalm 88, verse number 18, uh, he said, lover, friend, acquaintance, all are gone. There is only darkness everywhere. Well, I want you to know something this morning. Those are the deadly deeds, but there's a response to that because of Christmas. And I think if you don't get anything else this morning, I want you to get this here, and that's that God loves you. God believes in you. God made you to win. He didn't make you to lose. He didn't make you to be wandering around in a fog, in a dense fog, but he made you to win because he loves you and he wants relationship with you. But Pastor Sammy, you don't know what I've done. You don't know my past. You don't know my history. You don't know last week. I may not, but Jesus does. And he still comes to you with arms wide open to say, come, come. And that's why we celebrate Christmas because the Lord came so that we can see him, we can know him, and he can do what he accomplished to do. And that was die on the cross for our sins, for the sins of mankind. And so if you don't get anything else, again, remember that, that the Lord, he loves you. So where do we go then? Where do we turn in our dark days? What's the answer? In 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 9, 29 says this here, you, Lord, you, Lord, are my light. You dispel my darkness. And then it says, I am the light of the world, Jesus says. I'm the light of the world. And so how do we handle the darkness? Well, listen, Jesus came to pierce the darkness and to bring life and to bring hope. So how does Jesus do that there? Well, number one, he encourages us. He encourages us when we're disappointed. Psalm uh, chapter 40, 30, Psalm 34, verse 18 says, The Lord, listen to this, the Lord is near to those who, who are discouraged. He saves those who have lost all hope. And you know, from now to the end of this message, you're going to probably hear this over and over and over again. But listen, there is nothing like God's word. If you find yourself in a dark position, in a dark situation uh, this morning, in this season of your life, I want you to know, turn to God's word and you will find hope you'll find the light of Jesus Christ in the scripture. And Jesus said, he is close, he's near to the discouraged, and he saves those who have lost all hope. Don't forget this, Jesus is near. He's near you. And I love what we find in Matthew, where he says, Emmanuel. Well, what is that? That's God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. And so the darkest part of the night is when really the light shines the brightest and Jesus has come in uh, to you in your circumstance in your situation that may be dark he comes to bring light to dispel the darkness in your life another passage of scripture that I that I just love and I'm sure you do too it's a familiar passage and it's found in Jeremiah 29 11 
and you're probably even quoting it even right now, but it says this, the plans I have for you, says the Lord, are plans to what? To prosper you, not to harm you, to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope, and what else? Not only to give you hope, but to give you a future. The Lord is with you. He's close to you. Open your heart to him. Embrace him this Christmas season. He's come to help. So God uses sometimes as well, I say this here, is that God uses sometimes disappointments and dark times to reveal himself to us. Um, the second thing is he strengthens me. He strengthens me when I'm distressed. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, I, and you probably have this memorized as well, where the, uh, the apostle says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Amplified uh, translation says, I have the strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me and gives me an inner strength. What a tremendous promise that is that we find in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. If you find yourself distressed today, um, look at that passage of scripture, read that passage of scripture, meditate on that passage of scripture. And I want you to know God's word will dispel the darkness and you'll sense the presence of Christ in your life like never before. Um, Philippians 13, again, I can handle anything. You can handle anything with the power that Christ brings to us. Psalm 23, verse number four says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil because, why? Because for thou art with me, your rod and your staff, they bring comfort to me, Lord. So the theme, I love the Psalms. The theme of the Psalms really is life can be very awfully, awfully difficult, but God is faithful and he's there for us. That's the message of the Psalms. Life is tough, but God is gracious. He's merciful. God is good. Well, the third thing is he will guide me. He'll guide me when I'm doubtful, when I'm doubtful, when I'm in that fog. He'll guide me if I will look to his word. John chapter 8, verse number 12, Jesus said, we said it before, I'm the light of the world. So if you follow me, you won't be stumbling through the darkness for the living light will flood your path. And I think we've all been there where we may have uh, forgotten something outside and we've got to go outside and get it and it's dark and uh, you're looking, you can't, but you get a flashlight, it brings light to the darkness, it dispels the darkness, and voila, you find what you're looking for. Listen, God's word, going back to the scripture, God's word is a light, it lights up my path. It lets me know what is right. It lets me know what is wrong. It helps me, it gives me directions for what is right. It helps me in my decision making. And if I make good decisions, then I'm gonna have a good outcome. And uh, that's God's promise uh, to us. Psalm 119, 105, it says this here, your words, I love the way this, that, that the Lord puts it here. Your words are a flashlight to light the path ahead of me and to keep me from stumbling. I'll tell you what, I've done my share of stumbling and I've also done my share of making some good decisions based upon God's word. God's word brings light to our path, to our circumstance and our situation. And then the fourth thing, like we're closing with this here this morning, is he will change me when I'm depressed. When we're depressed, one of the greatest things, the most powerful things that we can do is we can look to the Lord and ask him to, to, to penetrate our life with the light of the gospel. You may not feel like it. When a person's depressed, they don't feel like doing anything. But if you'll just force yourself, you'll make yourself, you'll discipline yourself to get into God's word and just to read through the promises of God. You begin to focus on God's word and God's promises. Pretty soon, 
the light of God's word begins to dispel that depression. And, uh, and you'll see it go. And, and with God's word, God's word, the light of Christmas, Jesus, you get new attitudes, new thoughts, new approaches to, uh, to life, new choices, because you're making decisions based on God's word. The uh, Bible says this here in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 13. It says, it is possible, it is possible for light to turn the thing it shines upon into light also. That's a powerful passage. It is, it, it is possible for light to turn the thing it shines upon into light also. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 9. I'm telling you, if you look in your concordance, you'll find light all over the scripture. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 9 says, The light produces in people all that is good, all that is right, all that is true. Uh, and that's what God's word will do for us. First John, another place where we find light. First John 2, 8. The darkness in our lives, I like this. The darkness in our lives disappears and the new light of life in Jesus Christ shines within us. Now I want you to know this, uh, this Christmas, this Christmas 2020, if, if, if you have darkness that is just all around you, I want you to look to Christ. Offer yourself to Christ. Embrace his promises and you'll find uh, that he'll bring hope and he'll bring peace and he'll bring joy to your life like never before. He will light up your life. And uh, he's offered you the gift. He's offered you the gift this morning in Jesus Christ. He was the first gift giver was God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. That was God's gift to us. That's God's gift to you. And uh, and, and, and he offers it to you. And so this morning, this Christmas, what will you do with the gift that God has offered you? I trust that you'll receive that gift. That you'll not let another Christmas go by where you haven't recognized the gift and then have received the gift and embraced the gift and found that the light of Jesus Christ will dispel the darkness in your life. Uh, let's offer ourselves, once again, a gift, our gift, our life to the Lord. Someone once said, well, uh, what can I give the Lord as a Christmas gift this Christmas? What is it that, that, that God doesn't have? He has everything. He owns the cattle, the scripture says, on a thousand hills. He owns gold, the silver. He owns everything. He's God. He created it all. What can I possibly give him? that he doesn't already have. And I want you to know, the thing that God doesn't have, he doesn't have your life unless you give it to him. He gives you breath. He gives you strength. He blesses you with health. That's his gift to you, your life. Our gift to him is giving him back our life and saying, come, I want to receive your gift, Lord. I want to embrace the precious promises in your word. And I want you to know it'll be you'll be hard pressed to experience a lot of dark days in your life if Jesus is the king of your life. Lord, we're so thankful um, at this Christmas time, this season, Lord, when we recognize the gift of Christmas. That God, it was you come in the flesh to walk amongst mankind so that we could see what you were like and know you. And you did this, Lord, for a reason. And that was that so that you could go to the cross, die on the cross, be raised from the dead, and then offer us the gift that you offer us this morning. The gift of purpose. The gift of eternal life. And the gift of forgiveness for our sins. A clear conscience. Lord, thank you for that. We want to do that this morning, Lord. As your church, we want to embrace your promises. We want to embrace and receive the gift of Jesus Christ. We ask you, Lord, to come anew and afresh 
in our lives. As we, Lord, move into this new year, the year 2021, Lord, we want to dedicate ourselves to you. We want you to dispel every ounce of darkness around us. And Lord, we'll be thankful for it. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. And amen. And amen. Well, God bless you. And we look forward to enjoying a Christmas Eve communion time with you, whether it be by uh, church online as we are today, and uh, uh, or may it be by Zoom. But we just want to invite you to, to enjoy a, uh, a Christmas Eve communion service together with Terry and I. We look forward to it, whether it's by Zoom or Christmas Eve communion service online. Well, listen, once again, God bless you, everyone. Have a great rest of the day.